Before we continue with the petrochemistry course, or petrochemical industry part, I want to ensure that you know the difference between petroleum refining and petrochemistry. So petroleum refining is much more into the part of purifying crude oil. So this is crude oil, crude oil going in. It has been desalted, so salt is going out. And now here it's going to be separated in several parts or fractions. That's why it's also called distillation column or fractionation column. So what we want here are products, typical fuel products, jet fuel, gasoline, diesel, fuel, LPG from alkylation units, cracking units, cooker and reformer. So as the name implies, petrochemical is related to the chemistry behind that. So we're going to see all these parts. What do we do with those parts and what are the chemicals involved here? So this column is typically analyzed in petroleum refining as well as maybe the reformer, alkylation unit and coker, sometimes even the cracker unit. We're going to review the cracking uh, section because it's dynamic glass, there is cracking. So we have these molecules and what cracking does is to separate or crack the molecules into more useful petrochemicals. So here it goes. Crude oil is part of petroleum refining and crude oil can have gas section, which is methane, ethane, propane, and propane, or kerosene section, gasoline section, gas oil, diesel, on other fractions, maybe even heavier fractions. But a very important product from crude oil is naphtha. And actually, petrochemical industry is based on a naphtha the most, about 60 to 70% the raw materials are naphtha whereas also ethane is also has a huge role we well, actually all gas propane butane those gases can be treated as petrochemicals and converted into ethane which you later know that this will be polyethylene plastics and so on so i want you to focus mostly on naphtha Ignore how crude oil is distilled, how they are separated. I just want you to focus here. And I have this uh, PDF from ISIS. If you want to check it out, go here, ISIS.com. It's an excellent way to verify what we're talking about. Petrochemicals are of concern. And these are the final applications of the petrochemicals. Of course, you don't want to have a crude oil barrel at home. What you want is gasoline. What you want are textiles made of plastic. You want your mugs of plastic. You want your rubber tires. You want your plastic containers. If you're talking about medicine, you can see here some pills, the plastic cover. You want also entertainments, rubber, etc. You don't want the crude oil, nor naphtha. You want the final product here. Okay. And as you can see here, the let's say the yellow part might be considered the crude oil part which is ref petroleum refining you have the crude oil you distillate it and fractionate it into natural gas or natural gas liquid condensates and then we have naphtha which we were talking about and other refining gases typically all other materials such as the diesel oil asphalt those are right here Okay, so we are not, not going to see that much. That will be a petroleum refining course. But we're going to see a lot of naphtha, refinery gases, and methane as well. Because with this, we're going mm, to make much more interesting things. We want to make chemistry rather than burn this for energy. And let me go to the PDF. It's much easier here. So let's see here the, the final applications, the piping, detergents, and I, what I will recommend you is to check this out. So agrochemicals even come from petroleum or crude oil, adhesives, engine parts, computers, cosmetics, fuels, and so on. Okay. So probably you're wondering what, why fuel? We have petrochemicals of interest that need to be developed in order to increase the quality of fuels. It's not just about having a gasoline fuel, uh, pool. You need to add some petrochemical materials in order to increase the quality of that. So let's go 
all the way here. Let's all these are petrochemicals. So you can see here methyl, methacrylate, acetic acid, formaldehyde, olefins, PVC, styrene, ethyl benzene, ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol. We have ethylene oxide, propylene, propylene oxide, cumin, phenol, acetone. And all of these have applications. So just let's go. I want to go to a, a little bit more, less known, for instance, from ethylene, which comes from refinery gases and naphtha, we can produce ethylene oxide via oxidation. And from the ethylene oxide, we can nitrate this with ammonia, which we are going to see later on in the course, and we will produce ethanol amines, monoethanol amine, diethanol amine, and triethanol amines. If you follow this path right here, you will see what are the final applications, which is detergents and agrochemicals. Why agrochemicals? Because nitrogen content is good for the agro industry. Also, if you're wondering, I don't know, maybe you are interested on polypropylene. It is produced from propylene, which typically is obtained from steam cracking or even catalytic reforming mostly steam cracking. So propylene, then we can produce polypropylene, which is a plastic. If we follow these lines all the way here, those are used in the auto industry. Also, if you're talking about the uh, caps, some plastic containers and so on are produced from polypropylene. And also don't forget the aromatics. Probably you're wondering, I don't know which one is used in which industry. Well, if you're talking about, let's go, food packaging, let's go here. What's this? This material, probably you know it. So you just follow here, and this is polystyrene plastic, which comes from the polymer of the monomer styrene. How do we produce styrene? From ethyl benzene and pol what else? Benzene. So we need to produce benzene in order to convert to ethyl benzene and later to styrene. So where do we get benzene the most? We have several ways. Most likely is going to be obtained via reformation of low uh, chain materials and so on. So I just want to show you this. Probably you, you were rather thinking on crude oil distillation, but now we're going to focus much more into the chemical part. How do we produce as acrylic acid? How do we produce such solvents? What is NB10 good for? What are nylons? How do we get them? Why are they interesting? And so on. Okay. So guys, just don't worry. This might seem a lot of petrochemicals, but once you start analyzing them and more importantly, studying how they are created, you will be, uh, let's say, associating or relating the material. So you will see, oh, of course, this comes from propylene because this is a C3 material. And uh, of course, ethylene oxide is the oxidation material of the ethylene, which is a double bonded material, which of course is a gas and comes from the crude oil distillation and the refinery gases. Okay, guys. So once again, very important to ensure that we are not going to analyze that much into petroleum refining. Of course, we need to analyze it because this is the previous process but we're going to focus more into the chemical part, how to convert all these materials. You don't know how many materials you could get from naphtha alone, okay? So I hope I didn't scare you that much into this uh, petrochemical list. And I see you in the next video.